What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and we have some a little bit of an old news. It's a 2017 news. But still, news nevertheless. Discord how Discord stores billions of their beautiful messages. What database they use is, and how do they do it? This article is one of the best article I have re ever read in a long time. This is really well written. Yeah, it's old, but you know, guys, I don't really care because if you find gold gems like this, even if it's 20 years old, please send them my way. So I appreciate, uh, let me credit who sent this to me because I appreciate you so much, guys. Actually, this was sent in Discord. His name is Yeti, Yeti93. Thank you so much. And uh, if you found any uh, interesting articles like this, please send them my way. So, Discord moves from MongoDB to Cassandra. It's a very interesting read. And uh, the reason I want to cover this is because it, it overlaps with, with very recent topics that I'm discussing recently in the channel and in and, and, and my course, Introduction to Database Engineering. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a very good read. So I'll, I'll reference the article below for you to read it. But meanwhile, how about we jump into it? So let's read this introduction a little bit, guys. Discord continues to grow faster than we expected, and so does our user-generated content. With more users comes more chat messages. That's what Discord is, chat or voice. In July, we announced 40 million messages a day. That's July 2017, or maybe July 2016, I think, because this is... This article came in January 2017, so that must be 2016. And then they announced 100 million messages a day. And now, in 2017, they were 120 million messages. But now they easily, I, I, I think they passed half a billion messages a day. I would not be surprised, especially with the with the with the explosion of of, of Twitch streamers and and and, uh, and Discord servers being used all the time. So how are they doing this? So they are storing. I'm not gonna read the actual article for you, but I'm gonna summarize it for you. So they are storing prior to 2015, I believe early 2015, they started working with MongoDB. That's the database they started using it. And they are uh, storing the messages with a simple collection, MongoDB collection, and it has two fields, multiple fields, but two fields that are interesting. Channel ID and created at. You might say, why did they create an index on these two particular columns? Well, if you if you used Discord, the most important queries are give me the chat messages for this particular channel. You're not gonna ask for messages for multiple channels. So that's the first question. And the most important thing is why created ad is I want recent messages only. So if you, th I think Slack works exactly the same. Teams work exactly the same. You're always seeing the latest messages. If you want, you can scroll up and pull the oldest. But by default, the the most exercised query, exercised query, is uh, on recent only. So create an index on on the created at date is very important. So the date field is very very critical. So that's that's the index they have on MongoDB. In and here's where they are article gets very interesting in november 2015 i'm quoting we reached 100 million stored messages and at that at this time we started to see that expected issues appearing they started seeing some issues appearing, and they they looks like they anticipated for this issue you might say hussein what's the issue the data and the index could no longer fit in ram and latency is starting to become unpredictable for MongoDB. Again, guys, this is 2017 MongoDB, right? And before we jump into anything, guys, you have to know that, take this with a grain of salt, if this worked for 
for Discord does not that does not mean MongoDB is a bad database. Yeah, I have criticized MongoDB many times on this channel for certain design choices, but doesn't mean that it's a bad database. It's just use cases. Same thing with Uber in 2016, moving from Postgres to 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 MySQL, they moved because of their special circumstances and their special use cases, just Postgres didn't work for them. That's why they moved, right? And we can get into that. It's just they were creating insane number of indexes and, and Postgres does not do well when you write and need to update many, many indexes because each index points to the table directly and you have to, it, it just thrashes everything, right? Doesn't mean that Postgres is bad. So MongoDB here is the same thing. So I might say, what's the problem if the index does not fit in RAM? <laughs> well, if you want to search against anything, the index, usually the index is always, almost most of the time, entirely is in the memory. Why? Because that's the most stuff you're searching on. You're searching on the index all the time. So if it's in RAM, that's beautiful, right? And I made a video about indexing, guys. If you're interested to know more about it, check, check out this video right here, indexing. So yeah, so we want, the database tries to fit the index as much as possible in the RAM, right? So that, uh, so, uh, so that it becomes essentially freely to scan everything. And in this case, it becomes kind of the limitation. There is no memory. If the index can fit, if the index can fully fit in the RAM, there is no limitation anymore. The only limitation is the CPU. That's why this scenario is called CPU bound. A CPU bound database architecture or setup is when your index or data maybe fully is fitting in the RAM. So you have like, I don't know, three terabyte worth of RAM. Can you do that? I don't know. I think I know I saw I saw one terabyte RAM, but I don't know if you can go the more than that. If you're going to do it, then 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 the index is everything in the RAM. So the only limitation you have is how much CPU, how many threads can you spin up to to scan the index in memory as fast as, as fast as possible. However, if the memory does not, uh, if the index does not fit in fully in the RAM, then you are essentially called I/O bound. Why? Because the operating system will start paging some 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 pages to disk that are not used and you start going io that's called io bound so the cpu is not the, th the threshold the the limitation the in this case the de uh, the database uh the the memory is the limitation and this is what they hit this is what they hit the index will become so large 100 message 100 million a day Right, so the index. Imagine how big the index that contains channel ID and created ad became. It's so huge, and that's not a big problem usually. MySQL has test. I think per Percona uh, database. Uh, it's a company that they they do kind of beautiful tests. Check out, check them out, guys. They they check MySQL on when it's I/O bound. That means the index does not cannot fill it in memory. And they test when it's CPU bound, where they can fit everything in memory. So they have they give the database a huge amount of memory, and and they they test the performance and they compare. The the MySQL Postgres they all built so that they can uh, essentially work in both scenarios effectively, right? Because you cannot purchase all the RAM in the world, right? At one point, you will run out of RAM. So this is what happened. Discord ran this and they started seeing completely unpredictable things because probably mongodb had a bug at that point it did not do well with uh io bound scenarios it just started to thrash and the mo the, mo the first thing i i started to ask myself so I, as i was skimming and reading this database like wait a second why do you have like a single index? That's a huge index. Fuck, we talked about this, guys. The first thing you do is, okay, create an index, and there are some tricks you can do. Why don't you do partitioning? Forget about sharding. Sharding is the last thing you can do. And MongoDB supports sharding. 
but they claim that it was so complicated to set up. There you go. We knew we were not going to use MongoDB Sharm because it's complicating to use and not known for stability. Again, 2017 uh, speak, right? This might have changed. I tried to uh, stay impartial as much as possible. Okay. So yeah, uh, sharding was not a choice for them apparently. And then, uh, but but I don't care about sharding. Partitioning. Does MongoDB support partitioning? If anyone knows, let me know in the comment section below, guys. I would love to know. Uh, if it, if it did in 2017, or if it does in, in 2020, I have no idea. But that's the first thing you need to do. You need to partition okay? and 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 make your indexes as smaller and smaller as possible so they can fit in memory so that you don't have I.O. bound, essentially, situations, right? That's, 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 that's what we try to do. We try to do as much as possible beautiful things. So they talk about choosing the right databases, what, what's their criteria here and stuff. I'm not going to go through this. You can read it through yourself. Uh, this is all. Uh, and meet Cassandra. So I'm, I'm, I don't know much about Cassandra. I know it's, it's, it's built by Facebook, inspired by Amazon. DynamoDB, and it's built by Facebook. It's an open source product. It's, it's a good database. Uh, that's what, from what I hear. And uh, it's by default supports sharding and partitioning. So, so the idea here is uh, it's a KKV store. It's a K key value store. However, there are multiple layers. So the first K is a partition key followed by a primary key followed by a clustering key. So now you... you you can see that you're partitioned by default, which is beautiful, beautiful, right? When you want to know exactly what you read, you hit the node that actually has that particular content, right? If MongoDB supported partition, they wouldn't have seen this problem, right? Because they would partition on, I don't know, channel ID, for example, and every table will have, I'm saying table because I'm, I'm used to relational model, right? Table will have, oh, this is the channel, I don't know, this channel ID and messages, and you can just grow as much as possible. So if that channel has a lot of messages, only that channel will get affected. And we're going to see there is a limitation in Cassandra. Cassandra wasn't perfect, by the way. The way they moved to, to, to Cassandra, but it wasn't perfect. Anyway, long story short, they created a table uh, on channel ID, and, uh, and the key becomes channel ID message ID, right? So that's how they partitioned to. <laughs> the moment they did that, immediately they got an error after a few tests, right? I'm going to uh, make it short. So what's the problem? When you partition on the channel ID, that's what they did at first, right? They started getting an error saying, hey, your partitions are increasing more than 100 megabytes in size. It was like, I was like, what? Who cares? And then, then, then they immediately say, well, who gives? Cassandra advertised that it can support two G GB partitions. So why do we have, why are you yelling at us when we read, reach 100 megabyte worth of partition? Who cares? Of course, I'm, my channel is going to have a lot of messages, right? So, so why? They said, wait a second, that is, that is bad practice. Doesn't, if, if they support something, doesn't mean that's a good idea. Cassandra, guys, by the way, is built with Java. And Java, you know, it's very infamous for their JVM <laughs> and, and, and their jo garbage collector. <laughs> garbage collector, right? If you write to memory a lot with Java, there is something called the garbage collector. I, can, I can't say it. Garbage collector, right? Which it says, okay, it scans your memory. It says, okay, what is the orphan stuff? And it starts cleaning up garbage and when that happens when you write to a memory a lot and you kind of dereference memory location that you no longer use the garbage collector wake up and does something called stop the word it says hey wait a second everyone stop i talked about this many times in my channel right and, and and that's one of the reasons why linkerd moved from java as their sidecar proxy to Rust as their as their sidecar proxy, and I think uh, Go was it Go? Yeah, Go as a control plane. That's one reason because it stopped the word. Everybody stop. Hold on for 10, 5 seconds. Let me clean up. 
if you pause a database for five seconds, that is bad, right? Imagine I, I have a query. I'm asking for, for my messages and oh, all of a sudden. That is why Cassandra limits partition size to only 100 megabytes. They don't want you to go up beyond that because the moment you go beyond that, then the garbage collector will start getting nuts, right? Because will start cleaning. Yeah. So, so they did something very nice. They said, okay, let's introduce this idea of buckets, right? And uh, from what I understood is they partitioned, they did a sub-partition. They said, okay, not only channel ID, I'm going to partition pair bucket. And a bucket is, I think, a 10-day worth of messages. That's it. So now they are using the created date to create some sort of this virtual thing that's called bucket. And the bucket plus the channel ID becomes a partition. Obviously, the partition becomes very, very small in this case because you're not going to fit 100 megs worth of content in a 10 days period per channel unless this channel is very, 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 very popular, right? So that's their idea. They, they test. I bet that in 2020, they, they bumped this little bit up from 10 days to, I don't know, or, or maybe they made it shorter, five, 10 days to five days, because they will definitely have a channel with millions and millions of uh, users that will hit that 100 megabyte partition size. So they, they invented this idea of partition. Everything become rosy and everything is nice. Everything is beautiful. They launched. They run into what we call the eventual consistency problem, which we talked about right here. Go check that video. Eventual consistency. Cassandra is an eventually consistent database. Why? Because they they are no SQL. If you're gonna put in that family, and if you put in that family, they are eventually consistent by default. That means when you write, the next read does not guarantee that you're gonna see what you're reading. So that's thus it's not consistent. But they prove that it's gonna eventually be uh, converge and gives you the results that you want. And start creating some problems that I don't wanna get into. But like, here's, uh, I apologize for the podcast listeners, but what we're looking at here is two people, one creating a message, and then the other person is, is deleting that message. And while that the first person is, is just creating the message, now they are updating that message, right? And creating a field in that message. And now, when you update that field, the message is already deleted. So what the people see is everything is nulled out, including the author ID. And, and this is impossible because author ID cannot be null. It's a not null. So how do you get this situation? It's, it's so weird. And then, so they had to write scripts to kind of kill these things. To, to, to actually physically delete these things. Because Cassandra doesn't actually physically delete the row, they mark it as deleted, just like we've seen this many times. And they call this row tombstone, right? Because it's very expensive to actually delete something physically, so they actually mark it as deleted. Mark, mark as deleted. And during reads, they, they know that, oh, this row is actually deleted, so let me actually just ignore it. So they took the hit to actually pull it into memory. And pay attention to this because it's going to come to the next problem that they had, which is absolutely amazing. I love how this blog is written. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because they go into details and I love it. I love it. I love it. So now you pull these tombstones, which are, if you have a lot of tombstones, then you just allocated memory for literally nothing. <laughs> In your in your in your in your desk, right? In your in your computer, in your machine, your host, in your node. Meet their next problem. Performance. They talk about the write performance because Cassandra is very well known for writes. And from the from what I read and listened from podcasts, uh, is Cassandra is very good for read because they have like a append only uh, log structure merge tree. They use an LSM mode, and we talked about LSM in this channel a little bit. Not a dedicated video, but log structure merge tree is is beautiful for write because it doesn't have a B tree. It doesn't have to rebalance itself and then just move stuff along. It yeah, doesn't have that stuff. It's just always append, 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 append. Appends are beautiful because we know what's the last position of the uh, of the file is, and we can write very quickly. Right? We don't need to seek and oh, 
in place update like b3s b3s yeah b3s append at the end but sometimes an append can trigger a rebalance and that rebalance need to go seek back and change the tree location and that's an that kills the ssd if you do it a lot of time that's why it's, uh, is, is great for right so that's that's basically they don't actually go into that much detail but i i just gave you the Tidy. Made the big surprise when they moved to production after I think uh, I don't know how many days was it uh, six months. After six months, they ran into this problem. They noticed that Cassandra just stops the ward. Ten second garbage collection start cleaning up, and they noticed that there is one. There's this one channel that just kills the performance of that particular node when it happens. It's called Puzzles and Dragons subreddit subreddit public Discord. So what happened? They go to that message, uh, they go to that channel, so they join the channel, the, 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 the developers, they join this channel, are we still recording? Yeah. They join this channel and says, they view the channel and says, after 20 seconds, they get a single stinking message. That's it, there is one message. Why would a one message take 10, 20 seconds to load? Look what they did. They had millions, millions of messages. In that channel but what they did they deleted all of them and left one <laughs> so the channel is still valid but they just deleted everything so we might be saying who's saying what, what, what what's the problem i can delete stuff remember what we said with cassandra deletes are marked as tombstones and what do we do with tombstones since because of eventual consistency we had we don't know if this real delete unless we read it so they read it, puts it in memory, they read all these millions of messages, and only one is active. So they have to filter everything in memory, and just like that, you had all this garbage in your memory, and the garbage collection wakes up and says, holy shit, I need to clean up all this garbage right now. Guys, stop the war. Let me clean up Java. So it will start cleaning up all this mess. And it will do all that stuff. And it will do all that. So yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> so that, that's essentially what I'm, I'm going to, I summarize what, what happened here. So what? how did they solve this? They lowered the lifespan of Tombstone from 10 days to 2 days. So that they physically removed that stuff. I don't know why you would uh, you keep those tombstone alive. I, I guess for restoring purposes. If someone deletes, I was like, shut up, dude. You cannot restore anything. But I, I guess they want to support that feature. And guys, here's a beautiful thing. That in the future, they want to upgrade from Cassandra to, uh, to 3. And what I really was interested in, they want to explore Scylla DB. So Scylla is very similar to Cassandra, and I still remember in 2015 and 2016, it was like it was it was very just like so an infant database was born, and it still started to get uh, a lot of uh, fame and fortune. Scylla DB. So it looks like uh, they might move to Scylla DB. Why? Because Scylla is written in C++, and C++ does not have garbage collection. That means we rely on Scylla to clean up their mess after uh, after every operation instead of uh, having a java like a garbage collection right so they think uh, moving to Scylla might help i don't know maybe maybe not but that's it guys i really enjoyed reading this article i know it's old but i don't care because it's beautiful it's if you guys found an article from 2015 please send it my way uh, whether on, on Twitter, you, you can see my Twitter here, H-N-A-S-R, and anywhere, email me. I love these messages because I really appreciate them. Thank you so much to, to whoever sent me this uh, to this article. Keep uh, bringing those, right? Because the, the other day I covered WhatsApp moving to 10 million TCP connection uh, per server. That was like a 2011 article. I don't care. I don't. I don't cover recent news as long as it's quality, good news. I'm gonna cover it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening on the podcast. I'm gonna see you on the next one, guys. Uh, to support this channel, just consider hitting like and subscribe. 
because this supports the channel. This lets YouTube that there is this uh, this this uh, this douchebag that is talking about software, and uh, my, some of some of you guys might might enjoy this content. So appreciate you. Thank you so much. Stay awesome. Goodbye.